Okay, see if this sounds like a bad Monday to you. In the morning, planes crash into each other. Trains go off the rails. And doctors can't help people in hospitals. By afternoon, thousands of people in banks demand that their millions of debts be canceled. Gas stations don't work, and credit cards won't pay for any of your purchases. Television, radio, game consoles, all of these are now useless. It feels like an apocalypse has begun, but relax. This hypothetical disaster, called the Y2K bug, could have occurred on January 1st, 2000. And the cause of this disaster could have been two digits, zero and zero. What? Yeah, two zeros could have destroyed our digital life. Fortunately, 25 years ago, people managed to stop the chaos. The nearest similar apocalypse, called the Epocalypse, may happen on January 19, 2038. Yeah, it sounds complicated and incomprehensible, but let's dive into the retro atmosphere and find out what this Y2K bug is. So, it's the end of 1999. Hey, let's party like it! Computer technologies rule the world. Games with 3D graphics, useful programs, banking systems, total digitalization, and of course, thoughts that cyberpunk will rule the world in about 20 years. Humanity is preparing to celebrate the new millennium, but engineers and programmers around the world are sounding the alarm. In the 1960s and 1980s, when computer guys were creating software, they used a two-digit code to indicate the year. Instead of 1989, it was simply 89. Instead of 1996, we had 96. But what prevented them from writing the full date? At that time, two additional digits took up too much information. Storing so much data was expensive. And servers with this data took up too much space. Everything was fine for a long time. Banks, airports, insurance companies, large corporations, and hospitals used computers to work efficiently. Programs calculated dates, created schedules, estimated payments, formed hospital queues, and so on. For people, it was the year 1997, but for the software, it was 97. Then it was the year 1998 for us, but for computers, it was 98. The year 99 was 99. And the year 2000 was 00. zero. Whoa, stop! That's where the problem was hiding. We humans know that 00, zero stands for the year 2000, but computers considered 00, zero to be the year 1900. And this little millennium bug promised huge problems. For example, in the banking system, you take a loan with a certain interest rate. The bank charges you interest on the loan amount every day. Every 24 hours, you accumulate this small amount. But then, January 1st, 2000 comes, and the banking program calculates the percentage that has accumulated over a hundred years. Let's say you owe one dollar of interest today. After the millennium bug, you'll have a debt of $36,500. This amount will be even higher the next day. Obviously, there's a mistake here, but thousands of bank customers will be affected by this error and hundreds of banks will be experiencing this problem. A small mistake in the computer program can lead to an economic collapse. Money transfers, commissions, taxes, everything will be ruined. People will have to use good old cash again. Now, let's move on. Power plants. Computers at these stations check the water pressure, voltage, radiation levels, and energy distribution in the city. Such computing power requires regular maintenance. Let's say the maintenance is supposed to happen today, but because of the Y2K bug, the schedule is disrupted. This will lead to failures in the functioning of the station. Cities can remain without light and electricity. Now, air travel. Information about flights and departure and arrival dates is stored on computers. But the Y2K bug has just moved the whole schedule to 1900. The exact boarding time, the schedule of shifts for air traffic controllers, and countless other things necessary for the proper operation of airports, everything turns into chaos. And at the same time, planes are still flying in the sky. Of course, such a mess can lead to plane crashes. The same thing happens with trains. 
special programs automatically change the direction of rails at a certain time. But now, the whole schedule is disrupted. Two freight trains carrying fuel can crash into each other. Boom! And this is just the beginning. Disasters happen at train stations and in the subway. Ships are at the same risk. Cargo vessels are delayed in the seas and oceans. Ports are overflowing with boats. Giant ships crash into one another. Tons of cargo are falling to the seabed. The Y2K issue affects not only software, but also hardware. The first one is programs that give commands to a computer. Hardware is the equipment a computer uses to execute commands. But fortunately, the apocalypse didn't happen. Engineers and programmers around the world upgraded computers in time. The solution was simple. They expanded the date to a four-digit number. What was 99 turned into 1999. 00, zero became 2000. Just two additional digits. But people did a lot of work and spent billions of dollars to upgrade everything by January 1st, 2000. However, the problem wasn't solved everywhere. Some radiation equipment failed at a nuclear power facility in Japan. It just stopped working. Luckily, no disaster occurred, as there were backup installations. The Y2K bug promised global problems, but in the end, nothing terrible happened. For this reason, many people began to believe that Y2K was a hoax or an urban legend about the end of the world. But a similar situation may happen in 2038. Let's call it the Y2K38 apocalypse. The thing is, the time on most computers started at 00000 on January 1st, 1970. And many programs count not days and months, but seconds. This way of time counting is called Unix time. It's still calculating how many seconds have passed for the last 55 years. It's probably a huge number with countless digits, but many old computers use a 32-bit system. It means they convert this number into a binary code consisting of ones and zeros. For example, 000001 on January 1st, 1970, in the binary code, looks like this monster. Hey, want to count the zeros? Mm, me neither. The problem is that the number of combinations of ones and zeros is limited. Those old computers use the 32-bit system, which means it can only fit 32 slots. So, when 2,147,486,647 seconds have passed since January 1st, 1970, these slots will be filled, and it will happen exactly at 3.1407 UTC on January 19th, 2038. At this point, the binary score will switch to a negative number and return to December 13th, 1901. And, well, I wasn't around then either. Only this time, the problem will be much worse than it could have been in 2000. Now, the whole world is based on technology. So, you can probably imagine what will happen in 2038. Websites, social networks, satellites, literally everything will be subject to global disruption. Even one second of disruption can cause sites like Reddit or Facebook to crash. People will lose billions of dollars if their Instagram stops working for one hour. And how would AI react to such a problem? Fortunately, such a digital apocalypse is unlikely to happen. We still have a lot of time until 2038. All we need to do is to upgrade our computers to 64-bit systems. In fact, the preparation for this upgrade started in 2003. Hardware development companies started publishing information for customers about the need to upgrade to 64 bits more than 20 years ago. Giant corporations like Microsoft and Apple can easily upgrade their hardware. But what about some old companies or forgotten railway stations that will still have 32-bit systems? Automatic lighting systems in old buildings, microwaves with old software, and many other things will stop working. Globally, this won't plunge the planet into chaos. But people with outdated phones will be very surprised to find themselves back in 1901. In any case, the problem is solvable. Unlike in 2000, we now have much more technological capabilities to upgrade all these systems. 
AI, global digitalization, powerful processors, and giant databases will all help us ensure an easy and efficient transition. When the whole world switches to the 64-bit system, we will forget about the problems with dates because the Unix time limit will increase to more than 292 billion years, which is longer than the Earth will last, so I think we'll be safe with the digital time thing. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.